you know, we've seen it in the past where we've had to reschedule games because of weather complex and things like that. So fortunately, that hasn't happened thus far this year. Not yet. Let's hope it doesn't happen at all this year. We'll come back with the with more of the bumper to bumper free game show. We'll be joined by the head coach of the Trojans, Joe Folk. After this, you're listening to Trojan basketball on Sports Animal 920. Arrow Coach Lines is ready to take you and your group on your next trip. Whether it's one day to Oakland or one week to Florida, Arrow Coach Line will meet your needs. 47 to 56 passenger coaches are available for charter service. Our motor coaches come equipped with DVD systems and Internet access is available. We have added a new 16-passenger Sprinter van to our fleet, which is ideal for local service or airport transfers. Call 663-6002. Arrow Coach Lines, a family-owned and operated business for over 65 years. Big Red should be your only stop when you need gas, a snack, or an ice cold Pepsi product. Big Red still offers three ways to save at all Big Red stores. Save 10 cents a gallon when you buy a car wash and 5 cents a gallon when you use your Valero card. On Big Mondays, get premium gas for the price of mid-grade or mid-grade for the price of unleading. While you're filling up your gas tank, fill your tummy with Big Red's excellent food options. McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, Baskin Robbins, Pizza Inn, Pizza Pro, and Cock of the Walk Express. Stop in today and remember to follow us on Twitter at Big Red stores. You know, I found that an auto policy from Shelter Insurance is a really good idea. Know why? No, why? Because their rates are competitive. Their agents are terrific. And if you have a claim, the service is excellent. I like that. And you know what? No, what? 97% of Shelter customers who've had claims say they're satisfied with the way Shelter handles them. No brainer. (laughs) No kidding. Shelter Insurance for your auto, home, and life. Seek Shelter today. Brought to you by Shelter Insurance. See Ron Paulson for a free insurance review. Welcome back Welcome inside back the Jack Stevens Center, Center for tonight's, tonight's basketball, basketball game between the UALR Trojans, Trojans and the South, South Alabama, Alabama Jaguars. Jaguars joined, joined now by the head coach of the, the Trojans, Joe Foley. Joe Foley. And coach, you come off the road trip. You got another game here a day after you just played. I think we're only in NBA tour right now. It's a play and then get a day off, day off, travel, travel, and play maybe one or two, and then get a day off, travel, travel. So a lot of travel right now. You know, you just hope it don't wear your kids out. And you know, it's really hard to stay focused a lot of times. You get, when you're getting up at 5 and 6 in the morning, six in the morning and get in and practice, and practice 4 or 5 in the afternoon. afternoon and, and, you know, you know one, practice, one practice, it's really hard really to tell hard if they've got it or not. Or not. So, so uh, it's uh, going to be it's interesting, gonna be interesting this, year this year to kind of see, see what happens. What happens. After the game After the at Georgia game, State, State, a win on the, on the road, road, which is always nice. You gave the girls a little bit of time off and you brought them in that evening for a little film session. Well, you know, that's what we're trying to get to get this film. We're trying to keep the film working the same. The practice is where we had to let off. You know, physically, uh, your body can only take so much. So mentally, I think it can take a lot more. So, you know, if we can get it into the minds, what they're going to do, they can still be pretty quick. And then you're saving your legs for the game. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do that night. You know, we got two games, two more games this week. And after this, so three games in one week, that's going to be tough regardless of where you are and what you're doing. So, you know, we're just trying to try to get them ready mentally as much as we can and take it easy on their bodies this week and, week and get through the week and see what happens. What happens. When you say when mentally, you say that mentally, means film study, study, but that also but that means also doing means walk-throughs, walk-throughs, walk-throughs in airport, in airport terminals. terminals. I think we, uh, Chicago, Chicago will be glad we're not we're coming, coming back through there anymore. I think we stopped the traffic too many times. But, you know, the kids, I thought, accepted it pretty well. I thought they focused on it and tried to get things out of it. And, you know, hopefully it'll all pay off tonight because everybody's having to do it. And, again, I think it can be. You know, my, my, my regards, regards, I know everybody's, everybody's got to do it, so it's equal, so that, equal way. that way. But I think but our I think preparation, preparation that we do, that we do is, is, is where we win a lot of games. Lot of I think where we make kids, kids do a lot of things, things uh, during, uh, the week during the week to get week ready for the next game. game. Uh, I don't uh, think as many coaches do as much prep as we do. So I think it hurts us a little worse the way we have to play right now, especially here early in the conference race and not have many days to practice. But, you know, who knows? We'll see what happens. Talk about the South Alabama Jaguar team that you play. Their record doesn't look impressive, but... But they have they have one impressive, one impressive player. player. Yeah, she shoots yeah, she ball shoots extremely well. You know, shoot that well from the three point line. Uh, a lot of things uh, can turn around in a hurry. And she, and she she definitely hurt us down there last year. Last year, they beat us the second game, game down in their place last year. Uh, they mixed uh, up the man in the zone. We took some bad shots on the road, and then we let them. We let them. You know, played in their place. We let them drive and kick and shoot the ball. So we ended up, you know, getting lost. Lost. You know, that was one thing about the Georgia State game. 
you know, they beat us down there last year on the road, so we kind of made that one up. So, you know, you don't want to drop one at home after you just got through got through on the road like we did. I think Georgia State's got as much time on there. Maybe even more than the conference. So, you know, you don't want to come home and play at home and lose something and just lose that grand that just made up. Talk about the play of Alexis Dawn this past Saturday, 5 of 8 behind the three-point line. She and Taylor Gall had 21 points. She started every game for you this year. She is really coming on. Coming on. You know, for you know, for junior college, junior college transfer, transfer, she's picked, picked up well. She's, she's, well. she's, she's learning, she's learning on the run, on the run, and, and you know, Stenson seems to get real frustrated. Keeps a pretty level keeps head, pretty level head. And, you know, and you know, people are playing a lot of zone against us because they don't like to play against motion and all the screen and cutting and cutting. And especially, especially see that here early too. Early too, when they don't have a lot of time to prepare. We're probably gonna see a lot of see a lot of you got to knock down some frames for shots for shots. If you hit the three, that's even a bonus. And you know, when she shoots it like she did the other day from the three point line. You know, it just uh, you know it kind of takes the heart out of the other team. So if she could keep doing that, it sure makes coaching a lot easier. No doubt about that. It makes calling the game much more fun as well. I can guarantee you that. I thought she shot one from the Georgia Aquarium on uh, Saturday. At least that's how I called it. She was uh, way out beyond the three-point line. She can she can get it off pretty deep. Uh, she's she's you can tell she's a pure shooter. And you let her get her feet set and let her get a little bit of time, and she's, she's a pretty good threat and against the zone. You know, when you can expand the zone, pull it out, and open up that middle a little, little bit, then, you, you know, the middle becomes open. You can start getting some easy baskets inside. But when you can't knock down that shot, then they can tighten it up a little bit, and then it, get, then it becomes really hard to score. Taylor Galt seems to be on a roll. At least she was early in the game there in Atlanta against Georgia State. 17 points in the first half. When she hit that first tough jump shot, did you know that, okay, this could be a, t- a game that Taylor really has a good one? Well, you know, Taylor's game in the past has always went off that first shot or two. If she comes out and hits that first one the second one, then she seems to have confidence and seems to be, you know, really – feels like she can carry the team and do whatever she wants to do and if she comes out and misses the first couple then she seems to doubt and then her defense kind of lets up and the thing I'm most impressed is her defense has been really good this year and that's you know you put her with Cobbins and and you get two good defensive players that's got a lot of experience then they can kind of control the game a little bit and that's one thing I thought we did against Georgia State is we control uh, we didn't let them go on any big runs and that's you know that's what got us the lead is they couldn't score on us. And then when we started hitting shots and then making threes, then that expanded out even more. The keys offensively and defensively tonight against South Alabama, what are they? Well, I think, again, you know, they're very quick at the guards. They like to penetrate and kick for the three. So I think that, uh, you know, we got to make sure that we not let them get in the paint off the, off the dribble and kick it out for three. So if we can stop their dribble penetration and be in their face when they shoot threes, then I think that'll be a good thing. And then offensively, I think, you know, we're going to have to see what kind of man they're going to play. And, uh, you know, if they're going to play us a lot of zone, I, I kind of expect them to play some zone. So I think we're going to have to knock down some shots again. Always nice to be back inside the Jack Stevens Center. Coach, good luck in the game. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, that was Ron. Uh, that was Joe Foley. Pardon me. Trey Shap joined by Ron Jumper here in the Bumper to Bumper pregame show. And, uh, Ron, the emergence of Alexis Dawn at the point guard position, a junior college transfer, she's really picked up what Joe Foley likes to do very quickly. Well, you usually see that adjustment year for a junior college transfer coming in, but she's come in and immediately been able to start. Uh, her conditioning's su- superb where she needs to be able to play all 40 minutes if that's what Coach Foley needs her to do, understands on both ends of the floor how to give the kind of effort Coach Foley needs. Um, that's the kind of game-changing recruit bringing into your program that takes you to a new level because what, that's what Alexis Don's been able to do because not only has it changed their offensive because they play, run that motion offense, Having her stretch the, stretch the floor with that three-point shooting, it also opens things up for Taylor Galt and makes the game easier for her as well with that one-two punch on the offensive end. UALR has been getting it done on the defensive end and on the offensive end. You said it earlier, shooting over 50% from the floor in their last two games. It's unbelievable to see from watching these games my fifth season now. That defense has always been something to watch. But when they, when they can stretch the floor and shoot the three, knock down jump shots, attack the rim, you're even starting to see an inside presence develop from Caitlin Pratt inside, all hitting on all cylinders right now, and you just want to keep the good times rolling. Do you think that the South Alabama team might still be searching for an identity? They come into this game three and eight, zero oh and two in Sun Belt Conference play. Well, they've got you know their senior Bri- Brianna Hall. She does a great job for them, uh, and they and they've got some incredible athleticism. Not the biggest team ever, but they've got some they've got some raw talent inside. When you look at uh, China Ellis, the six two freshman for them. They really have some nice pieces. Haven't really been able to put it all together and get going. But if you look at the historical trends, 
Uh, South Alabama leads the series history 12 to 10, and they won the last meeting at South Alabama last year. So UALR has not done well against South Alabama, so throw the records out the window. South Alabama has confidence that they can once again beat the Trojans tonight. If you're UALR, though, it is nice when you look at the Sunbelt Conference standings, and there are the Trojans on top, a perfect 2-0, and 9-2 and overall, and 8-1-8 winning percentage right now. Well, and the other thing you have to keep in mind, too, is they have a great record, and they play a very challenging non-conference schedule. So to have that have that record with the schedule they played really bodes well for them as they get into Sunbelt Conference play. Yes, it does. We are getting ready for the national anthem here inside the Jack Stevens Center. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups plus Ryan's keys to the game for the ULR Trojans to get a victory, their 10th of the season, and their third straight Sunbelt Conference win and get to 3-0 and in Sunbelt Conference action. Back with more of the Bumper to Bumper pregame show, you're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Arkans, uh, the UALR Trojans and the South Alabama Jaguars getting set uh, to do action here tonight. Ron, the keys to the game. Well, the first key for the Trojans is to attack the rim. Do not settle for jump shots. This Jaguars defense has one shot blocker, true freshman China Ellis. If you can get her in foul trouble, She's the only person that can help protect that rim. It's a very undersized roster. Also, they have a negative six and a half rebounding margin. So if you do throw it up there, follow your shot. Go crash the weak side glass. Own the offensive glass. You're going to get extra opportunities. This is not a great rebounding club. This is the South Alabama Jaguars. Secondly, pressure the basketball. South Alabama averages 21.7 turnovers a game. They do not take care of the basketball. That pressure defense of ULR extended, deny one pass away, pressure the ball, disrupt their offense, and you should force turnovers. And lastly, most importantly, just get out the gates fast. Don't get off to a sluggish start because you're, you're, you're playing a team with a losing record at home. Get out the gates fast. Do not let that underdog gain confidence. Again, they own the series history 12-10. to 10. They won the last meeting. The South Alabama team is capable and has beaten the Trojans many times, so don't just assume because they're 3-8 and eight right now that you've got an easy win tonight. Come out with confidence. The starting lineups first for South Alabama. They are 3-8, and 0-2 in Sunbelt Conference play. Their coach, Kerry, Terry Fowler, 217-205. and 205 in his 16th year of college basketball, 11-28 and 28 in his second year at South Alabama. He will start Brittany Webb at guard, a 5'2 junior from Whiteland, Indiana Heritage Christian High School. Kobe Davis, a 5'9 sophomore from Wiley, Texas, Wiley High School. Brianna Hall, a 5'9 senior from Mesquite, Texas, John Horn High School. 
Taylor Jenkins, Jenkins, a six-foot junior from Germantown, Maryland, Bullis High uh, School, and China Ellis, a 6'2 freshman from, Cor- from Cordova, Tennessee, Arlington High School. For Joe Foley, 9-2, and 2-0 two, two in Sunbelt Conference play this year. He has 680, 209 losses in his 27th career, 224 of those coming here at UALR to just 128 losses. He will start at guard, a 5'4 junior from Amarillo, Texas, South Plains College, Amarillo High School, Alexis Dawn. She is averaging 10 points per game and two rebounds per game. At forward, Charde, uh, pardon me, Jane, uh, Shanity James, a 5'11 junior from St. Louis, Missouri, Miller Career Academy. She is averaging 10 and a half points per game, 6.6 rebounds per game. At guard, Taylor Gold, a 5'8 senior from Conway, Arkansas. Conway High School, averaging 13.4 points per game and 2.4 rebounds per game. At the other guard, Kanisha Shikov, a 5'10 senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Dutchtown High School, averaging 4.1 points per game and 2.4 or 4.3 rebounds per game. And at forward, Caitlin Pratt, a 6'1 sophomore from New Orleans, Louisiana, McDonough 35 College Prep High School. She is averaging 8 points per game and 4.8 assists per game. UALR is going to be in their home white uniforms with maroon letters and numerals. The South Alabama Jaguars will be in their dark royal uniforms with red numerals, white lettering. We're getting ready. Now, I want to say what I'd like to see early, if you're UALR in your first offensive possession, establish KP inside. Caitlin Pratt has an emerging offensive game. Let's see if we can get her some post touches early. KP's in the jump circle, the tip controlled by the South Alabama Jaguars, and they'll move right to left on your radio dial. Webb has it into the front court for the Jags, being guarded by Alexis Dawn. They look to screen for her, and Webb takes it to the right side. Now she brings it back towards uh, the Sunbelt logo on the right side of the court. Now she's in between the circles, comes left to Davis. Davis with the basketball. Up top she goes to Jenkins. They're trying to look inside for Hall. They can't find her right now. Actually, that's Hall with the basketball. Pardon me, she traveled with it. Actually going to call a foul out on the floor. It's going to be on Kanisha Cobbins. That's her first first team foul. So a quick foul called on the Trojans. That's a foul. If you're Coach Foley, you'll live with. They're playing aggressive on-ball defense just like they need to be. Webb to inbound the basketball. Gets it in, but it's knocked away by Kanisha Cobbins. Goes out of bounds right in front of the UALR Trojan bench. And so the Jags will have to inbound over there right in front of Bobby Brazel, Joe Foley, and Robert Dallimore. Jaguars get it in. They get it into the hands of Webb. Webb looking for Hall. Webb still with the basketball. Goes down to the post to Ellis. She turns right, puts up a shot, and Shannity James went straight up. Shot was no good. It was blocked, and the Trojans have the basketball. Cobbins into the front court, finds James on the right side. She goes in the post, puts up a shot, and I can't believe there wasn't a foul called. And then the Jaguars just commit a silly turnover after getting the rebound off the block shot. Standing out of bounds was China Ellis, but for some reason, Brittany Webb threw it to her. Well, a very odd sequence, an out-of-control drive by Shanity James, and then South Alabama, just a careless play on the baseline. Tro- Trojans find Alexis Dawn on the inbound pass. She takes it to the top of the key. She finds Covins. Covins to KP. KP from about 10 feet out. Her jumper is up. No good. Rebound comes down to Hall for South Alabama. Hall into the front court. She works to the right side. Comes up top now to Jenkins. Jenkins to Davis. Davis at the left free throw throw line extended. Finds Ellis. They try to pass it inside to Jenkins. It's knocked away, but Hall comes down with it. She runs around to the left side, throws up a layup. It's blocked by Shannity James. She got the rebound. Gives it to Alexis Dawn. The Trojans have number. Dawn takes it down the court. Tries to dish out to Taylor Galt behind the three-point line, but it's stolen away by Davis. Davis now in the front court on the left side. Dribble pass inside to Jenkins. Jenkins pass to Hall up top, top of the key. Hall thought about a three. Pardon me, that's Webb. Now to Jenkins, back to Davis. Davis is going to try and drive left baseline on Galt. Her shot is rejected by Shannon James, who saves it into Taylor Galt. Taylor Galt throws it ahead to Kenesha Cobbins. Cobbins off the glass and good. Wow, three blocks already for Shannon James. Kenesha Cobbins gets out ahead of the break. Easy left-handed layup. Trojans have the first two in this one. 17.55 to play in the first half. UALR leading it two to nothing. Right side, the Jags go with the basketball to Davis. Colby tries to go inside to Ellis and does, and then they find Webb on the left corner. Webb tries to drive left baseline, dishes it back up to Jenkins. She tries to go left. 
Her shot is up, and it is no good. Rebound fought for. Jenkins had it. She might have been standing on the baseline. No call, however. Webb up to Davis. Now to Jenkins. Back to Davis. Davis on the left side. Free throw line extended. Looking for a screen. Wants to drive. Lost the ball momentarily, but the Jags get it back. Cobbins with good defense. And then it's touched last by Shannon T. James as it comes out of bounds as they tried to get it to Brianna Hall. Well, the defensive intensity has been there early for UALR. They are denying one pass away, and South Alabama is struggling just to move the ball around the perimeter. Kanisha Cobbins is a lockdown defender, and she draws the task of trying to keep Brianna Hall below her average of 17 points per game. Webb throws up a three-pointer, and it is no good. Rebound Shannon T. James, who gets it ahead to Cobbins. Cobbins with the basketball on the right side. Brings it up to the top of the key. Picks up her dribble. Goes to Shan James' left block. She goes up. Her shot is up and good. Patience by Shanity James. Able to come to a complete jump stop. Give a great shot fake. Go up strong and lays it in with the left hand. Shan's got two. Trojans lead it 4 to nothing. 16.50 to play in the opening half. Davis with the ball on the left side for the Jags. Davis goes up top to Jenkins who finds Hall on the far right side. Hall wants to drive. Now she gives it to Davis on the left side. Davis thought about a three, up to Jenkins, top of the key. They try to go high-low. Ball goes down, and they're going to call Alexis Dawn with a foul, and that's just because she's so short, Ron. <laughs> she had an arm on the five of uh, the 6'2 freshman, China Ellis, down there, and it, initially she had the ball, but then when Ellis took the ball up, she grabbed her arm. All right, Dawn had the right idea, but Ellis held it just out of the grasp of the 5'4 AD. Webb inbounds the basketball to Davis. Colby Davis wants to go to the right side. She does. She's at the free throw line. Skip pass to Webb, who has to save it and bounce. Kanisha Cobbins is going to run it down, though, and then she lost it. She dribbled it too hard and lost it, and Hall has it to Davis. Davis goes inside to Ellis. Ellis spins to her left. Shot no good. Rebound, Alexis Dawn. AD quickly up the court. She turned a (laughs) three-on-three Blake into a one-on-nothing. She dished to KP. She gets it to go off the glass. She was fouled. She'll be at the line to try and complete the three-point play. The foul on Brianna Hall, her first first first-team foul. Wow, is AD fun to watch. Just a blur blowing by everybody. The no-look dime to Caitlin Pratt, who finishes strong and one opportunity coming up. Kara Clark into the game for the Trojans, replacing Kanisha Cobbins. Up off the bench for the Jags is going to be Lenitra Gilroy. Gilroy replacing China Ellis. And that's what you're hoping to happen. Get China Ellis a foul early. Free throw for KP is up, and it is no good. Rebound comes down to Jenkins. Kaitlin Pratt, a 72% free throw shooter. Missed the three-point play opportunity. Trojans lead it 6 to nothing, 15-56 to play in the opening half. Webb with the basketball being guarded by Alexis Dawn. She gives it to Jenkins. Jenkins goes to Gilroy. Back up top to Hall. Back inside to Gilroy. Gilroy throws up a shot and gets it to go in the lane. Tough left-handed hook by Gilroy inside. Alexis Dawn will bring it across the timeline for the Trojans. She goes right side, Kiera Clark. Clark drives and penetrates up to the top of the key now. Finds AD. AD in the lane. Throws up a jumper, and it's good. She wanted to find Shannon D. James on the right block. It was blocked off at Ron. She turned around and shot. Her six-footer was nothing but net. Well, she caught the ball under the goal and thought there was a lot of chaos. I need to get rid of it, but then she gave a shot fake and cleared everything out. Besides the layup, that's the closest shot she has made all season long because most of hers, we have learned, will come from behind the three-point line. (laughs) Right. Most of it's three feet behind the line. Jags with a basketball. Hall with it to Davis. A drive. A.D. able to strip it away. Taylor Galt lost it out of bounds. Two seconds. On the shot clock for Jackson, uh, South Alabama, when we come back, Trojans lead at 8-2. to two. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920.
Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center. Trojans lead it 8-2 over South Alabama, 14-55 to play here in the first half. South Alabama will have the basketball on the sideline away from the team benches with two seconds on the shot clock. That's where you've got to play straight-up defense and not give anything easy. South Alabama's in a catch-and-shoot situation. You can't give them, bail them out easy with a foul on the jump shot. UALR is shooting 66%, South Alabama 14%. Jags trying to get the ball in bounds. They do. They get it in to Farnsworth, and she couldn't get a shot off, and so it'll be a shot clock violation on South Alabama. Nice defense by UALR. It's been smothering defense by the Trojans thus far. Alexis Dawn gets it to Kara Clark, back to AD, top of the key, now to Clark. South Alabama in a 1-2-2 zone, and Shannon D. James finds Caitlin Pratt to Clark. Clark left side, Galt, her long three-pointers on its way, good! When Taylor Galt hits her first one, look out. She did it in Atlanta against Georgia State. You heard Joe Foley talk about it in the pregame, Ron, and she knocks down her first one here tonight. Well, that play was by Kiara Clark driving to the top of the key, sucking in the defense, kicking it to Galt for three. South Alabama, the banks are still <laughs> open as they get a jumper from Marquita Daniels from downtown. Her three-pointer is good. So she answers Galt's three, and it's 11-5 with 14-10 to play. And that's the cleanest look they've had tonight. Galt drives, dishes to Alexis Dawn outside to Clark. Clark back to A.D. A.D. with the basketball at the top of the key. Comes to the right side, picks up her dribble, now goes to Clark, top of the key. To Galt on the left side, another three-pointer rims in and out, no good. Caitlin Pratt with a rebound, out to A.D. To Galt at the top of the key, to Clark on the left side. Clark, one bounce inside to James. James up top to Galt, to A.D. Long three-pointer on its way, good! Great ball movement, able to swing the ball all the way around the perimeter on the weak side, a wide open AD, feet set, ready to shoot, knocks it down. And that's where we talk about Alexis Dawn, where we know her from, is outside beyond the three-point line. She was five of eight against Georgia State on Saturday. Tough to play a zone against this Trojan offense. Hall with the basketball. She has yet to score in the game, and she passes an errant pass to Colby Davis. Davis couldn't hold on to it. And it'll be Trojan basketball on the turnover. Taylor Galt comes out. Kanisha Cobbins back into the game for UALR. Well, that's what ball pressure does. It makes the simple routine passes and handling the basketball all of a sudden become not so routine. A careless turnover by the Jaguars. Trojans up by 9, 14 to 5, 13, 15 to play in the opening half. Alexis Dawn up top, Cobbins. Left side it goes to Clark. Back to Cobbins at the top of the key. Now it goes back left. Clark baseline pass to KP. Skip pass to Alexis Dawn. Back to Cobbins. They're trying to break this zone. A.D. up top to Cobbins. Cobbins with a basketball. To Kiara Clark. She steps inside the three-point line. Shot won't go. Whistle and a foul. And they're going to call it on Shanity James, I believe. Shanity James. Shanity James James trying to get rebound position. She fouled Brianna Hall. That's her first third team foul on the Trojans. And Kiana Keyes will come in replacing Caitlin Pratt. Well, James called for the foul, but yet again, great ball movement. Kiara Clark coming to the open area and, and, and the gaps in that zone. Shot, the shot didn't go down, but it's the right look. South Alabama with the basketball. Daniels brings it across the timeline, goes behind her back and loses the ball. It's picked up by Shannon T. James to Kenesha Cobbins. Cobbins will bring it down the floor and across the timeline. She has it between the circles now. Left side it goes Clark. Kiara back up top to Cobbins to Alexis Dawn. Dawn bounce pass. To James on the right block. James with a skip pass to Clark just inside the three-point line. Can't get her shot to go. Rebound, Kiana Keys. Keys with the rebound, gets it back to Clark. Clark up top to Cobbins. Back to Clark. She steps in. Now back to Cobbins. Cobbins goes to James at the high post. She goes down to the right baseline. Can't get her shot to go. The ball didn't hit the rim. Rebound, jump ball. It'll be Trojan basketball with 17 seconds on the shot clock. Improve your financial future and life at Arkansas Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of UALR. Well, Shanity James, not quite under control, goes in and puts up a tough shot. Really want to see her kick that one out to either Akira Clark in the short corner or, or AD out on the three-point line. South Alabama trying to go a little bit with size, so UALR will sit Alexis Dawn right now and bring in Taylor Galt. South Alabama also going to take Brianna Hall out of the game. Inbound pass comes to Kenesha Cobbins. She has it now at the top of the key. Picks up her dribble, gets it to Taylor Galt. Galt thought about a three. Back to Cobbins, to Clark. Back to Cobbins. Cobbins drives, dishes out to Taylor Galt. Galt drives left baseline, pull up 14-footer. No good. Rebound comes down to South Alabama to Farnsworth. Farnsworth brings it across the timeline, now leaves it for Daniels. Daniels with the basketball. Left side or right side, pardon me, it goes. And a loss 
pass. She didn't know, Mil- Miller didn't know if she wanted to pass it or not. Clark off the glass and good for UALR on the run out. <laughs> Turning defense into offense, Kiara Clark gets an easy one on that one. The redshirt junior from Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky pardon me, Julianne Miller, didn't know whether or not she wanted to pass it or hold on to the ball while ago. Another careless turnover for South Alabama. She's got it now again on the right side. Free throw line extended, looking for a teammate. She finds Ellis on the left, right block. Ellis's jumper no good. Rebound Taylor Galt. Galt into the front court. Being guarded by Daniels. Galt to put up a shot. No good, but she was fouled on the way up. We've got a timeout on the floor. The foul is going to be on South Alabama's Jillian Miller, her first, second team foul. We're back with more after this. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. UALR leading it 16-5 over South Alabama. Taylor Galt will be at the free throw line when we come back. Trojan fans, the first Steve Shields TV show is tomorrow night on MeTV starting at 6.30. Also tomorrow night, the first Steve Shields Joe Foley Coaches Show will be held at Dugan's Pub and right here on KARN 920 AM from 7 to 8. Galt's first free throw is up and good. Taylor Galt, a 68% free throw shooter. Alexis Dawn back into the game, replacing Shanity James. And so that's going to move Kiara Clark down to the block at the forward position. Galt, Keys, Clark, Dawn, and Cobbins on the floor for the Trojans. Second free throw, no good. Rebound comes down to Jack uh, South Alabama. The Jaguars... China Ellis able to grab it off of the Taylor Galt miss. Trojans just one of three from the free throw line here early on in this one. Jaguars with the basketball. They get it to Miller, and she traveled with it. Turnover number seven by South Alabama. Turnover number two for Miller. (laughs) So uh, South Alabama just not getting getting off to a good start offensively. Two for nine shooting and seven turnovers thus far. Trojans into the front court. Kanisha Cobbins with it. Trojans with six assists to just two turnovers so far. They find Kiana Keys. Her jumper's up and no good. She can't get the rebound. Nice block out by Farnsworth, and she will leave it for Daniels. Daniels across the timeline into the front court. Bounce pass on the right side. It goes to Combo. Combo up top now to Farnsworth. Farnsworth will leave it for Daniels. Daniels rolls around to the right side. Double dribbled, no call. Up to Farnsworth. She's at the top of the key. Right side it goes to Miller. Miller wants to drive with nine seconds on the shot clock. Tries to drive on Taylor Galt. She cuts her off. She picks up her dribble. She tries to backwards pass. Two seconds on the shot clock, and it's another violation of the shot clock for South Alabama as they can't get anything to go And another turnover. And KP comes into the game replacing Kiana Keys. Well, the ULR defense was so suffocating on that possession that we're at the whole 30 seconds, and South Alabama didn't get into any kind of offense. It was just... Helter Skelter out on the perimeter. Alexis Dawn across the timeline, dribbles behind her back. She's in between the circles, picks up her dribble now, finds Taylor Galt. Galt to Cobbins. Cobbins with the basketball, finds Alexis Dawn. Dawn with it. Jags going a little man-to-man right now on UALR. 
Dawn with it, finds Cobbins. Cobbins goes right on the block, dishes to Clark, who finds Dawn. Dawn needs to shoot, three seconds on the shot clock, tried to drive, can't get it off, and a foul on Caitlin Pratt. Her first fourth team foul on UALR, and that was just a bad offensive possession for the Trojans. Never able to get in any kind of rhythm, get their get their motion offense flowing. Uh, Dawn trying to make a play, got the ball poked from behind, and Caitlin Pratt picks up the loose ball foul. 17-5, 9.30 to play here in the opening half. Trojans by 12. Jaguars with the basketball. In the front court, Daniels at the top of the key. Wants to drive on AD. She cuts her off. Cobbins steps in a passing lane, steals the basketball. She has it going the other way to AD. AD on the baseline, tries to find Clark inside. She gets it to Galt. Galt drives her pull-up jumper no good. That was a wild shot. She might have been shoved, and the Jags got away with it. Miller drives down the lane, puts a shot up no good, and the rebound comes down into Miller's hands, but she was out of bounds. It'll be another Jaguar turnover. Well, Taylor Galt, I think she thought she was uh, Michael Jordan there for a minute. She uh, guided all the way from about the middle of the lane to the baseline before she let that one go. Taylor Jenkins back into the game for Grace Farnsworth. And Shannon T. James is up and off the bench for the Trojans. She'll be back in on the next dead ball as the ball is already put in play as Cobbins got it into Alexis Dawn. Dawn finds Galt at the free throw line. She gets it to KP on the right side. Back up top to Galt. Now to the top of the key to Cobbins. Cobbins with the basketball. Now she dribbles and she finds Kira Clark. Clark wants to drive, pulls back, now drives all the way down the lane, tries to dish it out to Cobbins, does. Six seconds on the shot clock. AD spots up three. Porter good! If she's able to get those feet set, it's probably going in. And once again, knocks it down. She shot that over 6'2". China Ellis coming running at her too. (laughs) Absolutely. Able to get it off enough arch on it to get it over the 6'2 shot blocker. Jags with the basketball in the front court. They're going to call a foul on the inside away from the basketball. On Kiara Clark, her first fifth team foul on the Trojans. Clark comes out. James comes back in. Back out for South Alabama is Ellis being replaced by Lenitra Guillory. Ball comes in to Miller. Miller tries to drive right baseline. The ball was kicked by Alexis Dawn on the pass. It'll stay with South Alabama underneath their own basket. Miller's out and Davis back in for the Jags. Julian Miller's had all of this UALR defense she wants thus far tonight. Jags get the ball inbounds and a whistle and a foul on KP, I believe. Yes, that's her second as she tried to poke the ball away. 16 foul on the Trojans. Picking up some fouls and that would be a way for South Alabama to maybe manufacture some points here this last eight minutes of the first half. Only five points, 12 minutes into the first half. The 6'1 redshirt sophomore Lexis Williams from Sherwood went to SMU out of North Little Rock High School into the game replacing Caitlin Pratt. Ball inbounds comes in and a missed shot by Jenkins, rebounded by Alexis Dawn. She goes quickly across the timeline. Nice bounce pass to Lex Williams. She tries to put it up, and she was fouled. She'll be at the line where she is a perfect 4-for-4 four four on the season. Let's see if she can make it 6-for-6 six six as the foul was on Simone Potts. No, make that Rachel Cumbo her first third team foul. Lex Williams at the line with two shots. See, what the shame is, AD makes a beautiful pass like that, and she won't get an assist for it. See, I, as a former point guard, that always drove me crazy. I know you make you drop a dime, player goes up and gets fouled, and you're not in the, in the box score. Because yeah, that was a great pass. And the first free throw is up and good. She's five for five on the season. Trojan basketball brought to you by Baptist Health Orthopedic Center. Choose a physician who chooses Baptist Health. Baptist Health, sponsored by Baptist Baptist Health Orthopedic Center, your orthopedic center of excellence. Lexus Williams gets both free throws to fall, so she is 6 of 6 on the year. Need to get her to the charity stripe more often. Jags with the basketball. Daniels on the right side. It goes now to Davis. Davis still with the ball, brings it to the right, to the top of the key. Being guarded by Taylor Galt, leaves it there for Jenkins. Jenkins will leave it for Daniels. Daniels on the right side. It goes to... Combo, Combo tries to go inside. Stolen away by Alexis Williams to Kenesha Cobbins. Cobbins is going to beat some pressure, go down the court, and lay it up and off the glass. Nice move by Kenesha Cobbins, avoiding of getting called for the charge. It looks like the defense was there, but able to gather herself, be patient, and go around the defender, elevate up and under control and bank it off the glass. 24-5 to five right now, Trojans over South Alabama. Now South Alabama to Cumbo. Cumbo, the ball stolen away by Taylor Gaunt. She'll take it coast to coast and lay it up and in. 
She and a timeout called by South Alabama as your Trojans have opened up a huge lead here. We'll take a timeout with them. You're listening to Trojan Basketball. Your Trojans lead at 26 to 5 on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Your Trojans lead it by 21, 26 to 5. 7-12 to play in the opening half. Trojans shooting 60% from the floor. South Alabama shooting 18% right now. And it has just been a disaster for South Alabama to start this basketball. Jags with a basketball in the front court. They get it to Davis. Davis guarded by Taylor Galt. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Now they get it to Jenkins. Jenkins to Daniels. Daniels at the top of the key. Left side pass to Jenkins. Knocked away momentarily by Williams. Now Jenkins drives. Lex Williams with another steal to Cobbins. Cobbins across the timeline. Nice defense by Lexus Williams. Cobbins at the top of the key. Finds Lexus Williams on the right side. She picks up the basketball after losing it momentarily. Finds AD at the top of the key. Alexis Dawn to Cobbins. Cobbins wants to find Williams on the right block. Does. Williams goes up, puts up the shot, and good. Look at Williams go. Look at the nice drop step. Goes up strong on the baseline and lays it in. We haven't seen this from Lex in quite some time. Lex getting some action tonight. 28-5 UALR. Jaguars with the jumper. No good. Rebound comes down to Kenesha Cobbins. Cobbins looking ahead. Wants to pass it to Alexis Dawn and does. Dawn on the right side where she's three of three from the floor tonight. A perfect shooting night so far for Alexis Dawn. Two of those from behind the three-point line. They find Shannity James on the right block. Gets it to go and she was fouled. She'll be at the line to try and complete the three-point play. The foul on Simone Potts, her first fourth team foul. This UALR offense starting to show out a little bit. Shannity James gets a nice and one opportunity finishing with the right hand up strong. Chardé Collins comes into the game replacing Kanisha Cobbins. Every Trojan player might get to play today, even in the first half. Well, 30 to 5. Make it 31 to 5 <laughs> as Shannon T. James gets the free throw to go. Delivered right to your door seven days a week. The sports section of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Arkansas's largest newspaper. Well, South Alabama right now with more turnovers than field goal attempts. And Webb has it in the front court. Free throw line extended on the left side. Goes on the block to Jenkins. Jenkins spins right. Now left. Throws up a shot. Can't get it to go. Nice block out by Shannon T. James. And a foul called on Simone Potts as she was pulling Shannon T. James. That's her second, fifth team foul. Shannon James with a nice box out textbook and is able to pick up the loose ball foul on the South Alabama defense. Potts comes out. Farnsworth back in for South Alabama. Inbound pass comes into Chardé Collins. South Alabama coming with a press. That's not good because Alexis Dawn's just going to break it just like she did. Up and off the glass and good. Coast to coast and the foul. Wow. A diamond full court press and AD just weaves her way through it all the way to the rim. Nice finger roll with an and one opportunity. What a play. 
Marquita Daniels, her first 16 foul. I tried to tell him the press is not good. <laughs> when Alexis Dawn gets it in her hand, she'll break the press, and she gets the free throw to go. A.D. now perfect from the floor and perfect from the free throw line tonight. And it's 34-5 to five with 5.20 to play in the first half. Nice jump in the pass lane by Alexis Williams. The steal, Taylor Galt off the glass, can't get it to go. Nice rebound by Chardet Collins as she jumped up for it. Alexis Dawn has it at the top of the key. Dawn to Galt. Galt looking for Shanity James. Galt's going to take it herself, pull up jumper, no good. Shanity James last touched it out of bounds. It'll be Jaguar basketball. <laughs> Taylor Galt with the nice mid-range pull up. That's her shot, just unable to get it go down in South Alabama. Just trying to get something going. They're two of 13, 15.4%. <laughs> Trojans are 13 of 24. Jaguars with the basketball. Jenkins to Hall. Hall's going to try and drive. Puts up a shot, and it's good. And no call as Shanity James thought she had drawn a charge. Well, Brianna Hall, if anybody can get a shot to go down on this Jaguars club, it is Brianna Hall. Taylor Galt thought about driving and now steps back to James at the top of the key. Bounce pass to Lex Williams, goes off the backboard. She nice pass to Charday Collins. Collins to Dawn. Dawn finds Galt. Galt wants to drive. Pull up, 18-footer, no good. Rebound comes down to Jackson, uh, South Alabama. Jaguars have it, 34-7. Up top, Farnsworth. Left side it comes to Hall. Hall on the left elbow. Back up top to Farnsworth. Right side it goes to Davis. Davis comes to the top, now goes to the right. Davis drives, throws up a shot, and a blocking call on Lexus Williams, her first seventh team foul. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Your Trojans lead it 34-7. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Ron Jumper, Trey Schapp, 3.58 to play. UALR 34, South Alabama 7. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's all you, that's all you even, can do, Ron. I don't know what to say. There's only, you know, there's only so many ways you can say they're up 34 to 7. My goodness. At the free throw line, South Alabama, it's going to be Colby, Colby Davis. Her first shot is up, and it is no good. Trojans shooting 52%, 75% from behind the three-point line, 5 of 7 at the free throw line. South Alabama, 21% from the floor, 50% from behind the three-point line, and now 50% from the free throw line as Davis got the second one to fall. Trojan basketball sponsored by Pepsi. It's the choice of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And they're coming back with that 1-2-1 full-court press, or a diamond full-court press is South Alabama. Charday to Alexis Dawn. A.D. bounce pass to Cobbins. Cobbins back to A.D. A.D. AD now will just walk it, now pass it to Cobbins across the timeline. Cobbins to the top of the key, 20 seconds on the shot clock, finds Charday Collins on the right side, skip pass to Alexis Dawn. Almost too high for her, but she caught it to James. Shannon to James back to A.D. She thought about a three. Now finds Cobbins at the top of the key to... Shanity James off the glass and good from the left side. 
Great patience by the URL offense, swinging it from side to side, and then they found a wide open Shanity James roaming the baseline. 36 to 8, Trojans by 28. Driving down the baseline, dishing out Daniels. The shot by Jenkins, no good. It was lost out of bounds. It'll be Trojan basketball. Jenkins driving in, trying to force the action. Just not there. Alexis Williams playing straight up. Still a diamond in one press, and UALR breaks it easily. Shannon T. James with it now in the front court after the pass to, from Alexis Dawn. Up top, Cobbins to Chardet Collins. Collins back to Cobbins. Cobbins to Collins. Collins drives down the lane. That pass to Alexis Dawn in the left corner. AD's going to drive down the lane, dish out to Cobbins. Cobbins with nine seconds on the shot clock was fouled as she tried to drive. Marquita Daniels picks up her second, seventh team foul. So Kenesha Cobbins, a 75% free throw shooter, will be at the free throw line with a one plus one opportunity. And the Jaguars, Jaguars defense is just scrambling and hustling the entire time. Because ULR is making that defense work, make that zone hustle from side to side. First free throws up, no good. Rebound comes down. Shannon T. James finds Cobbins down the lane. Can't get the free layup to go. And then South Alabama loses it out of bounds. Wow, that's the easiest look Kanisha Cobbins has had all year. Just not quite able to get that one to go. Taylor Galt back into the game replacing Chardet Collins. Kanisha Cobbins to inbound the basketball. She's the trigger person. Finds Shannon T. James. James will leave it for Alexis Dawn. A.D. at the top of the key. Comes to the right side, Taylor Galt. Galt back to A.D. A.D. to Cobbins. To J uh, Williams. Lexus Williams skip pass Galt on the right side. She drives down the lane, dishes to Cobbins. Cobbins goes in, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound comes down to South Alabama and to Brianna Hall. Hall finds Davis. Davis pull up three-pointer from the left. Elbow is good. And South Alabama now in double figures but they still trail by a whole lot, 36-11 well, with two minutes to play. Well, that's the cleanest look the Jaguars have gotten, and that's before the ULR defense is able to get set. They're going to need to look at getting shots off in transition before that ULR defense settles in. Taylor Galt to Cobbins to Alexis Dawn to Alexis Williams on the baseline. Her turnaround jumper missed everything. Rebound Taylor Galt. Galt in the lane, throws up a shot, got it to go. Smooth shot by Galt, one-footed floater, kisses it off the glass and good. She can really leap to... Taylor got way in the eye, in, in the air for that, and now she created a turnover by just faking, ju uh, jumping and blocking a Marquita Daniels shot attempt. Daniels lost it out of bounds. <laughs> you, you you could say that, or it might have been an, a you know a careless turnover by Daniels. But let's give Golf the credit. Let's do that. <laughs> Another she turnover. She created fear. <laughs> she and created, Daniels she got did. scared. She did. I can see it in her eyes. Another turnover for the Jaguars. 38-11. A minute 40 to play. Kiana Keys, top of the key to Alexis Dawn. Left side it goes Cobbins. Cobbins skipped past to Taylor Galt, thought about a three. Now finds Kiana Keys. The ball knocked away, and it's passed ahead to Brianna Hall. Hall on a breakout off the glass. Can't get it to go, and it's rebounded by Kiana Keys and then lost out of bounds, and they're going to say it'll stay with South Alabama. Kiana Keys will not get credit for the, the, the blocked shot, but she definitely altered the attempt by Brianna Hall on, on the fast break opportunity. Kiana Keys comes out, replaced by Kiara Clark. South Alabama to inbound the basketball. Webb gets it in to Hall. Hall with it on the left side. Up top it goes to Farnsworth. Farnsworth on the right side now. It goes to Daniels. Up top to Ellis. Ellis finds Hall. Hall back on the right side to Daniels inside. Now back out to Daniels. Daniels tries to drive, lost the ball. Uh, AD ahead to Taylor Galt. Taylor Galt goes up. It off the glass and good. <laughs> uh, this is probably the most uncontested wide open layups we've seen the Trojans get in a basketball game this year. And that's really going to help your shooting percentage from the floor as well. 20, uh, make that 45 seconds to play in the half. South Alabama with the basketball. Marquita Daniels behind her back now leaves it for Webb. Webb on the left side, wants to drive left baseline. She's cut off by Alexis Dawn. AD knocked the ball away momentarily. She got it back to Farnsworth. Nine seconds on the shot clock. To Hall. Hall with the basketball. Wants to drive on Cobbins and does. Throws up a shot. Can't get it to go. Cobbins with a rebound. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Or 24 seconds to play, pardon me. Now 20 to play as Cobbins brings it around and up to the top of the key between the circles. Trojans can add to their 39-point lead. Pardon me, 29-point lead. 
Cobbins, left side, Galt, four seconds to KP. They need to shoot. Cobbins with the ball to AD, long three, pointer at the buzzer is good. Oh, wow. Alexis Dawn finishes the half <laughs> perfect from the floor, knocks down a three pointer. Your Trojans lead it 43 to 11 at the half. The perfect ending to the perfect half for the UALR oh, Trojans. Could wow. they have shot any better? <laughs> they couldn't have played any better. They only allowed 11 points. Wow. It's 43 to 11. And we still got 20 more minutes to play. And why I say that, the officials are looking to make sure that the shot was good. So before we get you to the AC Delco halftime show, we are going to look and see if it was good. And I'm looking, and it is a good basket. The officials say that it was good. So with that, up next is the AC Delco halftime show. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Okay. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Um, when I tell you the score is 43 to 11, please believe me, because <laughs> that is what the scoreboard says, and that is what the score is. And, Ron, you can look at the uh, halftime box, and I don't think you can find anything wrong with what UALR has been able to do. 12 assists, only four turnovers, four block shots, six steals. They forced eight. Team, South Alabama turnovers. Joe Foley couldn't ask for a better half. I don't think I've ever seen a box score at the half where a team had more turnovers than field goal attempts. 18 turnovers for South Alabama, only 17 shot attempts. They only made four of those 17. Um, statistically, UALR just uh, dominant is, does not do it justice. The South Alabama team does not know where they are. It has just been a, an absolutely incredible performance by UALR. On pace yet again to shoot above 50% from the from the floor. They want to keep that streak going. 17 of 30, 32, 53.1%. So an absolutely great start for the Trojans. UALR led by Alexis Dawn with 14 points. She's 3 of 3 from behind the three-point line, 5 of 5 from the floor, 1 of 1 at the free throw line. She was 5 of 8 from behind the three-point line last Saturday over in Atlanta. Taylor Galt with 10 points. Shannon T. James with seven and four rebounds. Lexus Williams with four points in the game. Kanisha Cobbins with four points in the game. Two points for Caitlin Pratt. Two points for Kiara Clark. Charday Collins played. Did not score. Kiana Keyes played and has not scored yet. For South Alabama, 
They were led by Marquita Daniels with six points, two points for Lenitra Guillory, two points for Brianna Hall, and one point for Colby Davis. Brittany Webb, Taylor Jenkins, China Ellis, Simone Potts, Rachel Cumbo, Julianne Miller, and Grace Farnsworth all played and did not score. Trojans out-rebounding South Alabama 16-15, to and UALR with 26 points in the paint, paint to South Alabama's four. 16 points off of turnovers to South Alabama's three. 12 fast break points to zero for South Alabama. South Alabama with eight points off the bench. UALR with six. UALR with five second chance points to South Alabama's three. Largest lead is right now 32 points in the game. And, Ron, that's something that I didn't even expect. I thought maybe UALR would have a 15, 17-point lead at the half. I didn't think it would be almost double that. Well, this is a South Alabama team that came into the basketball ball game thinking they had a shot. They've done well against the Trojans. They win, they're they leading the all-time series 12-10. to 10. They won the game last year. And, uh, you know, they really felt like they had an opportunity to come in here and at least, you know, compete. It really hasn't been that way. But, but for the Trojans, something I think is really important, you look at Kenesha Cobbins. You look at their loss earlier in the season against Tulane. She turned the basketball over, really struggled, struggled against pressure. Look at the way she's turned the corner. She had a career-high nine assists against Georgia State and already seven assists here in the first half, likely to set a new career high for assists tonight, depending on how many minutes she gets in the second half. So that's a piece of the puzzle that I think is really important, her starting to mature as a young point guard as we go down the stretch of this basketball season. She had nine assists in the game against Georgia State, but seven turnovers, and Coach, Coach uh, Foley looked at her in the airport in Chicago on the way back and said, Niche, I don't think I've ever had a player have nine assists but seven turnovers in a basketball game before. Uh, the assist-to-turnover ratio is there, but you do want to cut down on the turnovers. And thus far tonight, she has done that in the first half, seven assists to just one turnover. So continuing to make strides, make improvements, uh, learning how to make the great plays, the, the highlight reel plays, but cut down on those turnovers, those careless turnovers we've seen on occasion in the past. When we come back, we will continue with the AC Delco Halftime Show. Ron Jumper, Trey Schapp, Trojans lead at 43-11. to You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Ron Jumper, Trey Schapp. It's the AC Delco Halftime Show. Trojans lead at 43-11. Around the Sun Belt Conference at the half, Troy leads 
UT Arlington 29-23. Also at the half, ULM, Louisiana Monroe leads Arkansas State 29-23. The other two games are final in the conference tonight. Appalachian State defeated Louisiana 63-51, and Georgia State defeated Texas State 74-69. Georgia State uh, at home leading Texas State, lost by 20 to UALR on Saturday, and Texas State that is where Arkansas, well, that is where Arkansas Little Rock or UALR travels to on Thursday. Actually, leave Wednesday, get there, and then uh, play Texas State on Thursday in San Marcos, Texas. Texas State has dropped a game, so that is their first loss on the season. UT Arlington, if things hold up there, it'll be their first loss. And Arkansas State, if things hold up in Monroe, it'll be ASU's first loss on the season. So UALR, Ron. Could sit atop the Sun Belt at a perfect 3-0 and after tonight and be the only undefeated team left in conference play. Well, and, you know, and that's why in the Sun Belt you just have to take it one game at a time. And, you know, well, you know, when you get to halftime of a game like this, I think it's okay for us to take a peek ahead. You know, looking up to that game at Texas State, that's a that's a test game. That's a barometer game for this UALR team to go on the road and get a, and potentially get a quality win at a tough Sun Belt Conference opponent in Texas State. So this game coming up. Uh, is another measuring stick game for Coach Foley's club. 43-11. to 11. If you're Terry Fowler in the locker room with South Alabama right now, what are you telling your ladies? Well, you know, with a game like this, it has to be a learning opportunity. And you really, all you can do is try to take it one possession at a time and say, hey, we're, we're down 32. Let's break this up into pieces. By the 15, you know, we're down, we're down 32. Let's see if we can, by the 15 minute mark of the second half let's see if we can shave eight points off of this lead and then don't worry about anything else let's just take it five minutes at a time and break it up into quarters and see if we can chip away trojan fans the first steve shields tv show is tomorrow night on me tv starting at 6 30 also tomorrow night the first steve shields joe foley coaches show will be held at dugan's pub and right here on krn 920 from 7 to 8 join ray tucker as he talks trojan basketball with steve shields and joe foley and Ray Tucker will have the call of UALR and South Alabama tonight on 106.7, the heartbeat. And that will come uh, 30 minutes after we are done here tonight. Too bad there's not a mercy rule in college basketball because we could get done a lot earlier. <laughs> right, they should uh, They should absolutely. We should have it where the, you know, the clock just runs, uh, you know, once you get past a certain margin. Still have your media timeouts <laughs> on a dead ball, but just let the clock run during yeah. – uh, Free throw shot, balls out of bounds, things like that. Yeah, just just let it just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. We'll be back with more of the AC Delco halftime show. Get you ready for the second half. Trojans leading it big, 43 to 11 over South Alabama. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920.
Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center. Trojans lead it 43 to 11. Both teams are back out on the court. We're ready for the second half. And Ron, I don't know how you can get a team fired up to come out and play a second half when you only scored 11 points in the first half and you allowed your opponent to score 43. Well, you know, if you're the coaching staff with UALR, at this point in the game, you're just wanting your team to continue to play great defense and, and give that energy level that you need. And on the offensive end, still play team basketball, run your motion offense, and not let it become, well, hey, we're up by 30. I'm going to go get mine. I'm going to go take some me shots. Still run your offense and get good quality looks in the flow of the offense. Same starting five for the Trojans. Alexis Dawn, Taylor Galt, Shannon T. James, Kenesha Cobbins, Caitlin Pratt. It'll be South Alabama basketball. And the Jaguars will start their same starting five of Brittany Webb, Kobe Davis, Brianna Hall, Taylor Jenkins, and China Ellis. Caitlin Pratt, the only Trojan with two fouls. Cobbins has one, Williams one, Shannon T. James one, Alexis Dawn one, Kiara Clark one. And we're ready for the second half. Jags inbound the basketball to Webb. Webb across the timeline. Bounce pass to Jenkins. Jenkins left side, it goes to Davis. Davis wants to look inside to Ellis. Ellis tries to find Hall coming around the top of the key, and she was fouled by Cobbins. That's her her second first team foul of the second half. Oddly similar start. Cobbins picked up an early early on-ball foul to start the first half and does so again in the second. And this time, Coppins runs through a screen. Hall drives off the glass, no good. Rebound, Shannon T. James clears it ahead to Alexis Dawn. She's going to push it down the floor. Dawn now brings it back out. Bounce pass to Shannon T. James, trailing the play. Can't get it to go. Foul inside on China Ellis. That's her first first team foul of the second half. And Shannon T. James will be at the free throw line with two shots. Well, you look at that play by Alexis Dawn, able to – be a blur out on the break, but stay under control, keep her head up. When the fast break wasn't there, able to slow down, keep her head up, and then a flashing Shannity James down the lane, gets it to a cutting James, and she goes up and gets fouled. First free throws up and good by Shan. She is averaging 10.5 points per game. She's got eight here tonight. Remember when your car was new, get that feeling again by going to Splash Car Wash, conveniently located at 9500 Rodney Parham Road in Little Rock and on JFK in North Little Rock. James missed the second free throw, came down into the hands of the Jaguars. They have it in the front court. Bounce pass to Jenkins from Webb. Left side it goes to Hall at the elbow. Bounce pass inside to Jenkins on the left block. She works against Shannon T. James gets it off the glass and good. Well, that time's Jenkins, who's forced a lot of shots tonight, took her time, made a nice drop step, and went up strong and kissed it off the glass. Alexis Dawn with the basketball top of the key, finds Taylor Galt. She pulls up for a jump shot in the lane, no good. Rebound comes down. Shannon T. James had it. But she was fouled as she tried to go back up. I believe they're going to get Ellis again. No, this time it's Taylor Jenkins. That's her first, second team foul. Well, Shanity James working for inside position on the weak side glass where the ball is most likely to come off a missed shot. Inbound pass comes into James. She leaves it for Dawn. Dawn in between the jump circles. Right side, Taylor Galt. Ball was knocked away. It was touched. So Alexis Dawn will run it down into the backcourt. 20 seconds on the shot clock now. Dawn top of the key. AD with the basketball, finds Taylor Galt on the right side. Galt finds Cobbins top of the key, 10 seconds on the shot clock. AD, she's going to pull up her eight-footer is good. (laughs) Alexis Dawn is perfect from the floor tonight, and she's got 16 points to follow up her 21-point effort over in Atlanta against Georgia State on Saturday. AD curled the screen hard, shot fake, one dribble, pull-up jumper, and she knocked it down. All passes to Davis. They go inside now to Ellis. Ellis puts up a shot, no good. KP stood straight up. Got the rebound. Ahead to Cobbins. Now to Shannon T. James off the glass. It spun all the way around the rim and popped out. Oh, my goodness. Great look ahead by Cobbins. James just not quite able to get it to go. Jaguars with it in the front court. Hall with it. Now to Ellis. She wants to drive from the high post to the low post. Lost the ball out of bounds. Last touch by Alexis Dawn with 17.58 to play. Trojans lead it by 33-46-13. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time for the Jaguars. Get a look. Jags, Webb inbounds the ball. It's knocked away by Taylor Galton into the hands of Davis. Davis to Jenkins. Back to Davis. She traveled with the basketball. It's a good call. She shuffled her feet before she started her dribble. 
as we've talked about, Trey, that's where pressure makes easy things <laughs> tough. You hard to have those careless turnovers because of that pressure constantly. Alexis Dawn, right side it goes. Kanisha Cobbins up top, Shannon T. James. Left side, Taylor Galt now. Galt back up to Dawn. Dawn drives down the right side, brings it back to James. James drives in the lane, spins right. Now back left, goes up. Nice move, can't get it to go. Got the rebound, and it comes down into the hands of Jenkins for South Alabama. Ahead to Hall. Hall drives, lost it momentarily, got it back. Goes inside to Jenkins, and Shannon T. James pops her from behind. That'll be her. Uh, that'll be her second, second team foul. I'm still looking at that uh, Vladi Divac Euro step, Shanity James, on that previous possession there. <laughs> that was She's a, been working on that in practice. <laughs> it looks good. It. it looked good. She couldn't quite get it to go, but it was a nice move. It was. It was a real nice move. Inbound pass knocked away by Taylor Galt, but it goes out of bounds off of her. Webb tried to find Jenkins on a quick inbounds pass, and the Trojans sniffed it out. Webb to inbound the basketball, needs to get the ball in, and they do to Jenkins. She pulls up for a 14-footer, and it banks high <laughs> off the glass and in. Well, you know, they've been throwing them up. Some of them have got to drop eventually, kissing off the backboard and, and banking in. Wow. It's now a 31-point lead for UALR after that two-pointer. Cobbins top of the key for the Trojans to KP. KP at the free throw line extended. Now finds Alexis Dawn at the top of the key, who finds Taylor Galt on the left elbow. Galt drives in the lane, jumper, no good. Rebound fought for, comes down, and Shannon T. James is holding her back as she was shoved. No foul called. 16.48 to play. Jaguars with a basketball. End of the game is Gillery. Gillery turns, puts up a shot, no good. KP picks up her third. That's a third team foul on UALR in the second half. Well, Caitlin Pratt had great position, was playing good defense, but then as Guillory was going up for the shot, reached down instead of going straight up and commits the foul. Arrow Coach lines, the safest bus going. It's the official bus line of the UALR Trojans. Free throw is up, and it's no good off the front of the rim. Guillory, a 60% free throw shooter. South Alabama as a team shoots 65% from the free throw line. They average 57 points per game and shoot 38% from the floor. Second free throw is also no good. Rebound by Shanity James. However, tonight, they're way off of that average as they're shooting 27%. Alexis Dawn, top of the key. Left side, it comes to Cobbins. Cobbins dribbles to the top now. Finds AD. AD inside the three-point line, her first miss of the night. That one was off. Didn't get her feet quite set. Rebound. Fought for and comes down to KP, and she picks up another foul. That's her fourth and the fourth team foul. Well, Caitlin Pratt, she, that's several times tonight that there's been a pile up off of a loose ball, and Caitlin Pratt's come away with it with a loose ball foul. And Lexis Williams will take off her, her warm up top and come in replacing Caitlin Pratt. If it were a closer game, Caitlin Pratt, Coach Foley might not have let her stay out there when she picked up her third. Yeah, absolutely. If it was a close ball game when she picked up the third, she, she wouldn't have had an opportunity to get her fourth foul. Left side, Hall Davis with the basketball now up to Hall. Hall at the top of the key being held well below her average. She only has two points in the game, averaging 17.3 points per game. Left side, Davis on the left block. It goes to Guillory. She spins in the lane, can't get the shot to go. James with the rebound. Ahead to Taylor Galt. Taylor Galt will... Bring it into the front court and slow it up a little bit. Under 16 to play now. Cobbins at the top of the key. Cobbins finds Galt on the right side. She drives in the lane. Pump fake. Back to Alexis Dawn at the top of the key. They find Cobbins now into James. James off the glass and gets it to go. She was hit pretty hard, but her toughness and strength got that layup to go, and it's 48-15. Well, Shanity James working the, working the floor, that motion offense, working the baseline. Got her feet set, went up strong. Shan's got two 10 points in the game. She's in double figures. Miss by South Alabama. They got the rebound, but Alexis Dawn got the re rebound off of that. And then she was fouled trying to go up the court by Colby Davis. Her first third team foul. Timeout on the floor, 48-15. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920.
Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Trojans leading at 48-15, and they will have possession of the basketball when play resumes. Kiara Clark, Alexis Dawn, Shanity James, Alexis Williams, and Taylor Galt on the floor for the Trojans. Inbound pass from Clark to Alexis Dawn. Dawn in between the circles, picks up her dribble, comes left side to Clark. Clark wasn't expecting the pass, but got it. Now she takes it to the top of the key. Clark at the top of the key, looks for Alexis Williams. Williams will find Shanity James. James spins to the left, goes up, shot is no good, but she was fouled. She'll be at the free throw line with two shots. The foul is going to go on South Alabama's Grace Farnsworth, her first fourth team foul. Shanity James showing out a little bit on that one. She gave a little pass fake to the, the juke the defender out of the way and went up strong for, and got fouled. Free throw no good by Shan. South Alabama shooting 26.1% from the floor. UALR has cooled off a little bit here in the second half, shooting 48.7, but still four of six from behind the three-point line. Second free throws up and good. Well, at least South Alabama now has more field goal attempts than turnovers, so at least they've, you know, Across that threshold. Jaguars with the basketball into the front court. It's in the hands of Daniels. Daniels looking for a screen. Now she wants to drive and lost the ball and slid all the way to the floor, and they're going to call a travel. Well, they're catching back up, though. And Dan Pressel, one of the assistants on the South Alabama bench, just put his hand <laughs> and his head down and just shook his head. Clark tries to drive right baseline. Gets it up to Lexus Williams. Up top to Alexis Dawn. Dawn, right side it goes, and Williams is going to be called for an offensive foul away from the ball, trying to set up. That's her second, fifth team foul. Not sure whether that was a legal screen or not, but we do know that was a violent screen. It was <laughs> violent. She tried to really just go in there tough and hard. South Alabama. With the basketball, top of the key, driving down the lane, shot off the glass and no good by Hall. She got her own rebound, however, and kicks it out to Farnsworth, who finds a wide open Marquita Daniels, who knocks down her second three-pointer of the game, and it's a 49-18 UALR lead. Well, with the way the Jaguars have struggled, they need to figure out how to get Daniels more shots. Alexis Dawn up. At the top of the key, finds Taylor Galt. Galt wants to drive left baseline, kicks it out to Williams. Lex Williams wants to drive now. She does. Shot no good. And an offensive foul on Lexus Williams. That's her third, sixth team foul. Well, Lexus Williams has had a great night, uh, but that's one of those cases where that's not her game. You know, 20 feet out from the floor trying to beat somebody off the bounce and pull up for a floater. That's really not her game. Needs to play within the flow of the offense. Marquita Daniels will bring the ball across the timeline. Up top to Farnsworth. Right side it goes to Hall. Hall at the elbow. Up top now to Farnsworth. Left side it goes to Davis. Davis had the ball knocked away by Shannon T. James. Ellis picked it up. And now to Hall. Her three-point attempt is blocked by Taylor Galt. Rabbed by A.D. Ahead to Galt off the glass and good. Wow. Those two, those two are fun to watch play together. Alexis Don off the Taylor Galt block. Just floats it out in front. Galt barely had to dribble on her way to the rim. I wish this wasn't Taylor Galt's senior year. To see her play with AD one more year would be awesome. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 51-18. AD picks up a foul as Daniels tried to drive around her. That's her second. That's the seventh team foul. So Daniels will be at the free throw line, a 61% free throw shooter. Another... <laughs> Well, at least South Alabama is starting to get a little bit of a rhythm, starting to play a little bit better, starting to settle in a little bit, play even basketball. The lead has stayed right around that 33-point mark. So Jaguars are you know, coming out and uh, showing a little pride here in the second half. Well, I'm sure if you're UALR, too, it's hard to keep up the pace that you had in the first half when you see, look up and you see the scoreboard and you're up by 30. First free throws up and good by Marquita Daniels. Well, and something too, you know, for the most part, you know, with Kate, you know, partly part of that's just because Caitlin Pratt's in foul trouble. But Joe Foley's keeping the starters in. You know, he's not calling the dogs off yet, uh, with 13 minutes to go in the game. Second free throw is up and good. 51-20. Inbound pass comes into Shannon T. James quickly back to Alexis Dawn. Dawn tries to break it, the press and does. 
Dawn with the basketball. Left side it comes to Clark. Back up top to A.D. Right side, Taylor Galt, 17 seconds on the shot clock. Back to A.D. Now to Clark. Clark steps in. James on the baseline. Around to Taylor Galt. She drives. Jump shot, no good. Had a player sliding underneath her. No foul called. Rebound comes down, and it's a jump ball Trojan basketball. A little bit of a wild shot there by Taylor Galt, uh, but UALR fortunate to maintain possession. UALR will announce their new athletic director tomorrow at 11 o'clock here at the Jack Stevens Center. Alexis Dawn, right side, Kira Clark. Back to Dawn on the left side. Taylor Galt, long three. Porter's good! <laughs> and Taylor Galt gets it to go. Feet set, knocks it down. Trojans now have their largest lead on the night at 34, 54 to 20. Galt knocks away an intended pass, and she is sitting in front of the Jaguar bench, and she is helped up by their coach, and she got hit pretty hard on the head too. I think she may have caught an inadvertent elbow from Brianna Hall. Uh, and, you know, Hall, of course, did not mean to do it on purpose, just going for the basketball, but I think, uh, I think she may have caught an elbow to the head. I think Sade Collins <laughs> is going to come in for her. And Taylor Galt is kind of holding the right side of her face as she goes to the bench. And she'll sit down and have a word with Mike Neal, the trainer. Col uh, Collins kicked the basketball on a pass by Hall. Went out of bounds. It'll be Jaguar basketball with 16 seconds on the shot clock. Trojans lead it 54-20. to 20. Daniels to inbound the ball. Gets it in. And a nice basket by Farnsworth. And it's 54 to 22. Well executed out of bounds play for the Jaguars. Trojans break the press. Clark into the front court. Now top of the key. She wants to drive and does. Kicks it out to Chardet Collins on the left side. Collins up top to Clark. 16 seconds. Clark double dribbled. Kara Clark double dribbled. We got a timeout on the floor. It's a UALR turnover, 54-22. Trojans lead it. This is Trojan basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back to the Jack Stevens Center. The Trojans leading it 54 to 22 over South Alabama. Ron Jumper, Trey Schaap with you. And so far for UALR, uh, the most points uh, they've allowed, or the fewest points they've allowed this season is 40. So they're on pace to have perhaps their best defensive performance of the season. It'll be South Alabama basketball when play resumes. And bringing it up the floor for the Jaguars and across the timeline was Daniels. Daniels now on the right side to Cumbo. Cumbo finds Farnsworth at the top of the key. Farnsworth is going to leave it for Daniels. Daniels tries to drive. Her pull-up jumper just inside the three-point line is no good. Farnsworth gets the rebound, though, and gets it back to Daniels on the left elbow. 
Daniels out at the Jack Stevens Center logo. Now to Farnsworth. Right side it comes to Hall. Hall wants to drive on Chardet Collins. Pull up six-footer. No good. Rebound tipped away by Clark into the hands of Chardet Collins. Collins will bring it down the court across the timeline. Up top of the key. Bounce pass on the right block to Shannon T. James. She goes in the lane. Lost it. Kiara Clark has it in her hands now. And Clark brings it around to the top. Clark, top of the key to James. Shannon T. James with the basketball. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Out to Chardet Collins. Chardet pull up jumper off the back of the glass and the rim. No good. Rebound Lexus Williams and she is fouled by Brianna Hall. Her second, fifth team foul. How about the effort that Lexus Williams plays with crashing the glass, chasing down the loose ball to get that offensive, offensive rebound and save the possession for the Trojans. 10 minutes, 45 seconds to play in the game. Trojans 54, South Alabama 22. Clark to inbound, gets it into Alexis Dawn. AD at the top of the key, finds Clark. Now Chardet Collins on the baseline, up top to Williams. Lexus Williams finds AD on the right side. Three-pointer off the front of the rim, no good. And the rebound comes down to South Alabama. Daniels with it on the left side, comes up top to Farnsworth, tries to go inside, high-low action, and off the glass and good, China Ellis. Well, China Ellis, you can tell, has a lot of raw talent as a true freshman. Uh, as she hones her game, gets a little more experience, she's going to be a good one. Alexis Dawn at the free throw line. Her pull-up jumper, rims in and out, no good. So Alexis Dawn started a perfect 6 of 6, has since cooled off from that. She is now 6 of 9. Farnsworth, top of the key. On a give and go, and then a wrap around to Ellis, blocked. Into the hands of Kiara Clark. Clark's going to take it, dish it to Chardet Collins, but Clark is going to be called for a foul as she charged in. That's her second, eighth team foul on the Trojans. Well, Clark had the right idea with the drive and dish. That's where you just need to come to a good jump stop and, and deliver the pass. Taylor Galt comes in for Kiara Clark. Monique Townsend looks like she's going to come in and replace Alexis Dawn. So Dawn goes out, and she's holding her right hand. Well, that's what you worry about in, in a blowout game like this is you you hate to have an, an injury during meaningless action these last few minutes of the game. But Alexis Dawn didn't go down and see trainer Mike Neal. She just sits next to coach Robert Dallimore. Let's hope it's nothing serious. Maybe a little jammed finger. South Alabama with the basketball. Farnsworth up high. Wants to drive right. Shannon T. James cuts her off, brings her back. And James cuts off the baseline. She was standing on the baseline out of bounds, and there's no call. Ahead to Monique Townsend. Townsend goes up. She is hammered hard. And she'll be at the free throw line with two shots. But how can an official not see that a player is standing on the baseline? Well, Townsend will go to the line for two, but wow, what a play by Shannon T. James. And the referees are going to go look at the monitor. Townsend will be at the free throw line. They're going to look and see if it's a flagrant foul. And I want to say it was Marquita Daniels who the foul is going to be called on. It tends to happen sometimes late in the game in blowouts like this. You start to see those, those frustrations coming up to the surface and, uh, and a hard flagrant foul at some point. Um, so ho hopefully that's not the case. 54-24, Trojans by 30. Kaufman Lumber Company is building business on service. Over 60 years in the industry, that's Kaufman Lumber Company at 5100 Asher Avenue. So we'll see how long it takes, but I still go back. It's incredible on-ball defense by Shanity James. Then deflects the pass, picks up the steal. Great, great hit ahead on the fast break to Towson, who goes up and gets fouled. Uh, All-around play on both ends of the floor by Shanity James. Marquita Daniels picks up the foul. It's just a common foul. It's going to be her third. It'll be the sixth team foul against South Alabama. And Monique Townsend will be at the free throw line with two shots. She is a 50% free throw shooter. Monique, a freshman. has, I was trying to find, first free throw is up, no good. She was two of four before that attempt. 
Well, that's a small sample size. You can see with her form that she's a good shooter. Just hasn't got a large enough sample to get that percentage up. Second one is up and good. So Mo Townsend with a point, 55-24, UALR over South Alabama. Farnsworth, right side it goes to Davis. Davis back to Farnsworth. Pardon me, that's Miller into the game now, and a foul away from the ball, and they're going to call Shannon T. James for her third, ninth team foul. And at the free throw line will be Grace Farnsworth, a redshirt sophomore from Milton, Georgia. 5'10", averaging two points per game, 2.4 rebounds per game. She played at Weber State for transferring in, originally out of Milton High School in Milton, Georgia. Free throws up, no good. Rebound comes down to South Alabama. They get it into the hands of Daniels. Daniels wanting to drive on Mo Townsend. She does. Can't get the shot to go, but they're going to call a foul, and I believe they're going to get Monique, or they might get Kiana Keys for helping out. No, it's going to be on Mo. That's her second, ninth, uh, tenth team foul, pardon me, her first, tenth team foul. Well, Marquita Daniels uh, on the offensive end has been the only Jaguar that's really been able to do any damage against this Trojan defense. Daniels' first shot is up and good. 55-25. Trojans lead. 8.55 to play in the game. Second free throw is up. This one's short off the front of the rim. No good. Into the hands. Off of a tip to Monique Townsend. Townsend brings it across the timeline. Jaguars had an opportunity to get it underneath 30. She drives for a layup. Shot no good, but she'll be back at the free throw line as Mo, as she was fouled by Taylor Jenkins. That's her second, seventh team foul. So both teams will be in the bonus from here on out. South Alabama in the double bonus, but Monique has two as she was fouled on the way to the rack. Second one's up, or first one's up and good. Townsend, these are valuable minutes at these points in the game where you know, this is where you still get something productive out of it if you do ULR coaching staff, getting those young players some quality minutes, getting them actually out in the game, not just practice and able to uh, and gain some confidence. Second free throws up and good by Monique Townsend as well. 57 to 25. Jaguars bring the ball into the front court. Right side it goes to Miller who tried to find on the baseline, I believe that was Cumbo, and she was fouled by Kiana Keys. That's her first. And with the Jaguars in the double bonus, we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. Trojans lead at 57-25. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Eight minutes, 34 seconds to play in the game. UALR leads at 57-25. And it stayed about even. We were at a 30, it's exactly 32 so far in the second half. 
Guillory at the free throw line. Her first shot is up and good. She's a 60% free throw shooter. Sometimes when these ladies have long hair, it's hard to tell the numbers. <laughs> right, you can barely you can barely make out the one in the file on the back of the jersey. Second free throw is up and good. And Taylor Galt back in the basketball game. UALR trying to take the ball out of bounds, and for some <laughs> reason South Alabama just <laughs> grabbed it like they were going to take it out of bounds. And Taylor Galt is having a laugh about <laughs> I it. I was going to say, Taylor Galt had to put her hand over her mouth. She couldn't help but chuckle a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Monique Townsend inbounds the basketball to Charday Collins, and Collins brings it across the timeline, top of the key. Picks up her dribble, finds Kiana Keys. Kiana drives right, baseline goes up, gets it to go, and she was fouled. Nice drive by Kiana Keys that time. The foul is going to be on Taylor Jenkins. That's her third, eighth team foul on South Alabama. Well, great job of Kiana Keys turning and facing and driving hard on the baseline, coming to a good jump stop, going up, absorbing the contact, finishing with an and-one opportunity. Taylor Galt comes out of the game, and I bet she won't see any more action. Diamond Jackson seeing her first action of the year, the 5'7 sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, into the game. Free throw was missed by Kiana Keys. Rebound comes down to UALR. Jackson finds Co Collins to James back to Collins. Collins with a basketball, top of the key. Dribbles between her legs, lost it. Now has it back. Shannon D. James with it. She wants to drive, now finds Monique Townsend. Townsend at the top of the key. Nine seconds on the shot clock and a timeout called by Joe Foley. And so it's a media timeout. We'll take it. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center. UALR with eight seconds on the shot clock and basketball possession. Charday Collins to inbound it, gets it into Diamond Jackson. Jackson drives to her left, now back to her right, finds Monique Townsend on a move down the lane. Monique Townsend's shot was rejected, but a whistle and a shot clock violation is called. They got the right shot that they wanted, ran the set well, but Mo just couldn't get the shot off in time. Well, absolutely, they executed the set. Townsend comes off a double screen around the baseline and tries to get a shot up as the shot clock expires, but gets it blocked and just unable to do so. South Alabama with the basketball. They run it through Jenkins. Jenkins now leaves it for Daniels. Her long three. Porter banks off the glass and in. She's made two of those tonight <laughs> that I guess the banks stay open in Mobile late. Uh, it's rare that you see two bank threes in one game, but – the Jaguars will take what they can get. She's had two bank threes and a bank jumper from the side of the of the goal. Trojans go to KP on the right black sh right block. She turns, puts up a shot, can't get it to go. Kiana Keys fights for the rebound, puts it up, can't get it to go, but she'll be at the free throw line as she was fouled by Rachel Cumbo, her second ninth team foul. Well, Kiana Keys, this is an example of somebody taking advantage of some minutes, uh, not looking at this garbage time. She's still going 110%. Uh, crashing the weak side glass with an opportunity to get a couple points at the foul line. Kiana's first shot is up, and it's good. 
Now, Keanu Keys, you know, Coach Foley tends to settle into a seven, eight player rotation, but Keanu Keys, you know, once we've seen Caitlin Pratt get into foul trouble, she's, she's a foul trouble night like that away from having to play 20, 30 minutes a night. Second free throw, no good by Keanu Keys. The st- starters are all on the bench except for Caitlin Pratt right now. South Alabama tries to drive. That's Miller. She brings it back, top of the key now. Stutter step, finds Daniels. Long three-pointer on its way, no good. Miller got the rebound, though. Now bounce pass on the right block is lost, and it goes out of bounds off of Kiana Keys. Lexus Williams into the game, replacing Caitlin Pratt. Shannon T. James, Kiara Clark, Kanisha Cobbins, Taylor Galt, Alexis Dawn, Caitlin Pratt, and Olivia Huell all on the bench for the Trojans. If we see Olivia Huell today, we'll know that, okay, she is not going to redshirt this season. Well, as, as tempting as it is to get those players in the game and get them some minutes, you, know, you have to think, uh, think long term. This will be one of the rare opportunities she'd have to play, so not expecting to see her make it into the basketball game. Jags inbounds, pa- inbounds pass was knocked away by UALR. Now they try to inbound again. They get it in to Farnsworth. Farnsworth with it on the right side, goes right block, knocked away by Monique Townsend. She has it going the other way. Monique Townsend is quick, too. She cuts the defense up and gets it to Charday Collins on the left side. Charday, right side it goes, Mo Townsend. She thought about a three, finds Kiana Keys. Keys drives in the lane. Her jumper's up, and it is good. Kiana Keys taking advantage of the opportunity. Another great move, pulling up for the mid-range jumper and gets the friendly bounce. Dow- Daniels lost the ball. Mo Townsend with it, finds Diamond Jackson. Jackson to Keys. Keys jumper, no good. Rebound, out of bounds. Last touched by UALR. Six minutes and a second to play. 62-30, to 30, UALR <laughs> over South Alabama. Keys pats herself on the chest. She knows she had an easy one she should have knocked down. I uh, Probably would have liked to see her use the backboard on that one, but nonetheless... South Alabama heads the other way. Front court for the Jags. They get it into Combo. Combo up top now to Farnsworth. Farnsworth at the top of the key goes to the left side, leaves it for Daniels. Daniels wants to run around Monique Townsend, and Townsend bumps her. That's her second foul. And Daniels will be at the free throw line with two shots. Daniels is, uh, has been going to work. Uh, with exactly half of the Jaguars' points thus far tonight and an opportunity to get more than half of their points. She's been it for the Jags. She came in averaging 6.9 points per game. She's got 15 tonight. 62 to 30. (laughs) 5.43 to go. Daniels at the line with one to go. Second free throw for Daniels is up, and it is no good. Rebound comes down to Ella. She goes up, puts it up and in, and the foul on Sharday Collins. Let's see if Ellis can complete the three-point play. That was Sharday's first team foul, or first personal, pardon me. Trojans have been over the limit in team fouls for quite some time. Ellis missed the free throw, and the rebound comes down to Collins, who gets it to Jackson. Diamond in the front court, top of the key. Finds Kiana Keys. Kiana Keys drives down the lane, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound comes down to China Ellis. Ellis ahead to Daniels. The starters minus Jenkins into the game right now for Jackson, uh, South Alabama Jaguars. Hall with it. With just two points in the game tonight, UALR has done a real good job on her. She averaged 17.3 points per game. Trojans try to save a ball inbounds was Lexus Williams as the Jags tried to find Hall down low. Or pardon me, that was uh, China Ellis down low and couldn't save it. And now I don't understand this. UALR has substituted all of their starters, but South Alabama has their starters back in, all five of them. And now an offensive foul away from the ball, an illegal screen on Brianna Hall. Her third, tenth team foul. Well, if you're South Alabama, you're just trying to salvage something from this basketball game. You well, want you don't want to get your starters hurt either. <laughs> uh, absolutely not. But, they, you know, I think at this point, uh, Terry Fowler is just looking for some positive takeaway in the second half. Lexus Williams at the free throw line. Her jumper's no good. Rebound, Kiana Keys lost it into the hands of Monique Townsend. And then she's fouled by... Grace Farnsworth. That's her second. 
And well, so Monique Townsend will step to the free throw line, and she'll have two shots. Townsend, yeah, she has lived at the free throw line tonight, only had four free throw attempts coming into the season. This one's up off the back of the rim, no good. You know, and that's the challenge with uh, both Towson and uh, Diamond Jackson is, you know, both are good uh, athletic young guards, but, you know, with the, with the play of Alexis Dawn, there's just not a lot of minutes up for grabs. Webb brings the ball across the timeline for South Alabama. 63-32. Monique got the second free throw to drop. Hall goes inside to Ellis on the right block. She spins left, throws up a shot, no good. Rebound comes down into the hands of Kiana Keys. She'll leave it for Diamond Jackson, and Diamond will bring it across the timeline. Well, that's where you can tell Ellis just has a lot of raw talent, but still still developing her offensive game. Keys on the pass from Williams, spins away from the basket, can't get the shot to go. Lex Williams gets it, goes up. Her hand was, the ball was stripped out of her hands, and it'll be Jaguar basketball. I think the officials are just ready to get out of here, too. They decided <laughs> to quit calling it as tight as they had been. Kiana Keys knocks the ball away from Farnsworth. Hall has it, left side it goes to Davis. Davis from the left elbow up top to Farnsworth. Farnsworth back to Davis going inside to Ellis. Ellis spins. Knocked away by Mo Townsend into the hands of Diamond Jackson. Jackson down the court. Throws up a shot. Got it blocked. Keanu Keys with a rebound. She lost the ball into the hands of Farnsworth. Wow. Great effort defensively by Grace Farnsworth. Hall with a three-pointer. Missed everything for South Alabama. And now Monique Townsend has it going the other way. Mo Townsend wants to drive. Stutter step, shot up, no good, but she was fouled. She'll be at the free throw line after the timeout. We're back with more. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center. Trojans lead it 63-32. Arkansas's most comprehensive sports news is found seven days a week only in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Monique Townsend will be at the free throw line with two shots. Trojan fans, the first Steve Shields TV show is tomorrow night on MeTV starting at 6.30 p.m. Also tomorrow night, the first Steve Shields Joe Foley Coaches Show will be held at Dugan's Pub and on KARN 920 AM from 7 to 8 p.m. Monique Townsend's first free throw is no good. Trojans cooled off in the second half. They're only shooting 28.6%, 6 of 21 from the floor, but 43.4% for the game. Most second free throw rattles in and drops through. Well, She's got five. Well, it doesn't look like they'll extend their streak of shooting over 50% from the floor. This uh, second half performance is going to eliminate that possibility. Ball knocked away by Charday Collins on a pass trying to find Rachel Cumbo. It went off of Cumbo's leg, and it's Trojan basketball. Diamond Jackson brings it across the timeline, 315 to play, 64-32. They go inside to Lex Williams off the glass, can't get it to go. Kiana Key's got the rebound. She comes down hard, and a foul underneath on Lenitra Guillory. It's her first, and Kiana Keys will be at the free throw line. She's a 63% free throw shooter, 6'1 sophomore 
out of Summerall, Mississippi. Well, the way Kiana Keys came flying in there and, and fell to the ground, you just held your breath for a second to make sure she was going to get up okay. First free throw is up and good by Kiana Keys. Last year she shot 50, or pardon me, she shot 60% from the floor. Second free throw, a little strong, no good. Rebound comes down into the hands of Rachel Cumbo of South Alabama. Ahead to Daniels. Marquita wants to drive and doesn't. She hollers for the ball back and gets it back. They try to go inside, but a foul on Lexus Williams. That's her fourth. As they tried to hit Guillory inside. Williams went around her and over her, and that is her fourth personal foul. Trojan basketball sponsored by Pepsi, the choice of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Guillory at the free throw line, first shot's up and good. Well, for a little bit there, the, the officials had seemed to swallow their whistles, but they found them. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> and now they're uh, both teams living at the free throw line the last couple minutes. Guillory gets two free throws to go. She's got five points in the game. Trojans inbound the basketball to Lex Williams. Then a giant Diamond Jackson to break the press. Jackson on the left side. Now takes it right side to Monique Townsend. Townsend back to Jackson, top of the key. Jackson trying to drive, brings it back out. 15 seconds, now tries to drive, and she was fouled by Marquita Daniels. That's her fourth, and Jackson will be at the free throw line with two shots to try and get her first points of the season. Well, you know, hope, hopefully she can knock down at least one of these and, and get, in, get on the scoreboard. Diamond Jackson with two bounces and a spin. The shot is up, and it is good. Nice free throw by Diamond Jackson. Her first points of the season. Well, and Jackson had some great moments as a freshman, a lot of, a lot of talent uh, in this young sophomore. Second shot is up, and it is also good. And she's two of two at the free throw line. Diamond Jackson been in the Joe Foley doghouse for a little bit of the beginning of the season. Good to see her contributing. Always practices hard. And once you're there, that's a, that's a tough place to get out of. Yes, it is. Jags drive right baseline. They swing it around top. Long three-pointer is no good. Rebound, Kiana Keys. Kiana Keys ahead to Diamond Jackson to Charday Collins in the front court. Charday brings it back to Diamond on the left side. Diamond Jackson now will dribble it up to the top. 2.05 to play. Right side, Monique Townsend. Back up top to Jackson. Left side, Charday Collins on the left side. She tries to drive left baseline. Does off the glass and good. Nice move by Charday. Smooth drive baseline. Off one foot, hangs in the air and kisses it nice off the glass. 69 to 34 with a minute 50 to play in the game. Miller with the basketball for the Jags. One dribble and picks it up. Now leaves it for Jenkins. Left side it goes around the horn. And a three-pointer is good by Rachel Cumbo from the left corner. Well, that's a big shot for the Jaguars just because it likely prevents them from being doubled up in the final score. Diamond Jackson, top of the key, picks up her dribble. Finds Lex Williams. Lex Williams got poked in the eye or something. Now she's okay. Diamond Jackson, Kiana Keys, free throw line. Her turnaround jumper no good as it bounces off the rim. Comes down into the hands of South Alabama. Daniels quickly across the timeline. Left side it goes. Combo, long three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Charday Collins. Charday with it. Brings it across the timeline. Will the Trojans run a little more clock now? Diamond Jackson just traveled with the basketball, but they didn't blow a whistle, so they let it go. <laughs> Mo Townsend with the basketball now, top of the key, 50 seconds to play to Kiana Key. She drives down the lane, throws up a shot, got it to go, and she was fouled. She'll be at the line with two shots. You oh, like, and one, pardon me. You like the aggressive play of Kiana Keys. Every time she touches the basketball, face turns to face up and then just puts her head down and drives to the basket, goes up strong, gets the friendly roll, and one opportunity. Jillian Miller picked up her second foul. And there's a player that uh, is out on the floor, and that looks like that's Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins is a little shaken up. She hit the floor hard. And Coach Terry Fowler walks over to her along with their athletic trainer. And Jenkins appears to be in quite a bit of pain as she's trying to catch her breath. So I don't know if maybe she got the wind knocked out of her, but she is trying to take some deep breaths right now. Well, Kiana Keys came flying through the lane full speed, and uh, Jenkins unfortunately got the brunt of it. 
Jenkins is being helped back to the bench. And uh, walking very gingerly back to the bench. And at the free throw line will be Keanu Keys to try and complete the three point play. Keanu Keys has really kept his ULR offense moving in the second half, uh, responsible for uh, really helping create the offense here and down the stretch. Her free throw no good. Rebound comes down to South Alabama. Marquita Daniels has it in the front court. 23 seconds on the shot clock. She finds in the corner. They go to the right block to Potts. Potts back out to Cumbo. Her long three-pointer no good. Lexus Williams with the rebound. Control the basketball, and the Trojans can just hold it. Diamond Jackson comes across the timeline, and the Trojans are still running offense. To Townsend. Back to Jackson. Jackson tried to find Keanu Keys. Monique Townsend lost it into the hands of Jenkins. Jenkins to Daniels. Daniels' pull-up jumper is no good. Rebound, Keanu Keys. Four, three, two, one. You can wrap it in maroon and silver. The Trojans win it 71-37 to here inside the Jack Stevens Center. And, Ron, this one was never in doubt from about a minute on after the start of the game. Well, <laughs> the Trojans were able to jump out to such a great start that there was just, this one was never in doubt. The defense, both ends of the floor, they shot over, they shot lights out in the first half, and the defense was stellar. Their best defensive performance of the season, 37 points, the fewest points they've allowed, outstanding defensive performance. We'll be back with the Big Red Store's post-game show. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. Okay. All right. Two post, yeah, two post game breaks. That's right. Welcome back inside the Jack Stevens Center on the campus of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. UALR 71, South Alabama 37. Just a dominating performance tonight. Ron Jumper, Trey Schapp, and Ron, that's all you can say about it. It was a dominating performance tonight by UALR's Joe Foley, Coach Trojans. Well, they're taking care of business. They're continuing to take it one game at a time, and that, that's something that in this situation – in years past, or we, we see it on every day from teams all across the country. Um, you know, you drop a game like this, particularly at home, and, and you know, it comes back to haunt you in March uh, when you're trying to fight for seeding or, you know, an at-large bid in the NCAA tournament, having one of those losses on your resume. So even though it appears to be a meaningless win and a blowout victory, these games matter because they absolutely kill 
your R your RPI at, you know, and give you that bag, bad loss as you try to, if you need, get an at-large bid on Selection Sunday. UALR led 43-11 to 11 at the break and then in the second half, and you talked about it. Maybe Terry Fowler told his team, hey, let's go out and try and just win this second half. Well, they couldn't even do that. UALR won the second half 28-26 for the winning margin 37-31. Well, absolutely. That's what you're trying to do is just salvage something. I think that's why we saw uh, Brianna Hall in the starting lineup of the Jaguars stay that far into the game, uh, and, but just not able to get anything positive to take away, particularly for Brianna Hall. This was a game where she came into it, you know, the leading score, uh, having had some success in the past against UALR, but not to be the case tonight. Have, you know, we talked a lot about the offense and what the team has done overall, but how about Kenesha Cobbins? You couldn't fit a piece of paper between Kenesha Cobbins and Brianna Hall the first 30 minutes of this game. Uh, she was just following Brianna Hall wherever she went and just not able to get a clean look at any point tonight. We'll be back with more of the Big Red Stores postgame show. We are expected to be joined by Alexis Dawn um, at some point during uh, the Big Red Stores postgame show, plus a UALR assistant coach will make their way up here and give us a little bit of time to talk about tonight's game. And then we'll get uh, you updated on scores from around the Sun Belt Conference and look ahead to the next Trojan basketball game. And I see Alicia Cash coming right now, so we'll talk to her after this. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on the Sports Animal 920. <laughs> 